Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Photographer's Journey, a podcast for the photography community. I'm your host, Lucas Dreija, and I'm also the CEO and co-founder of Format. On this podcast, I'll be interviewing a diverse range of successful photographers from around the globe about their journeys as artists and entrepreneurs. We'll talk about their stories, their work, their inspiration, and how they have grown their businesses. All right. This episode of The Photographer's Journey is part of a season we are calling Photographers, COVID, and the Future, where I'm talking to photographers about how they got started, how COVID has impacted the photography, their work, and their outlook on the future. I hope that their stories, their work, and uh, everything we talk about today will be a source of inspiration for you as you continue on your own journey through this pandemic and beyond. Today, I'm joined by Dante. Thanks for joining me, Dante. Thank you for having me, man. It's great to be here. Oh, no, my pleasure, my pleasure. Uh, Dante Marshall is a photographer, creative director, and a writer based in Los Angeles. Dante's services range from photography, creative direction, brand strategy, video production, and brand partnership. Since 2013, Dante has had the opportunity to collaborate with companies such as Acura, Adidas, Originals, Belvedere Vodka, City of Hope, Honda, Rock Nation, Wells Fargo, Neff Headwear, and Puma, among others. That's a long list of clients, man. Congratulations. <laughs> Listen, I'd love, to, I'd love to start a conversation and rewind a little bit to the very beginning of how you, uh, how you got started in photography. Uh, would love to hear how you discovered photography and how you got into it from the first place. Yeah, for sure. I, um, man, I just, so way, way back, I used to do like graphic design, um, like MySpace layouts and, and stuff like that. But um, my father, actually, he was studying photography for, for a while. And I would go on photo shoots with him. And there was one time where uh, I just picked up his camera and, and mm. went out. There was a, a young lady I was dating at the time. And she was getting into modeling. And I'm like, oh, well, I'll, I'll take some pictures of you. So we went to the lake took some pictures. The pictures actually came out pretty decent. Her friend saw those pictures and was like, you think that he'll take pictures of me? And I just start taking pictures of her friends and then all of our friends. And next thing you know, it just became a thing that was that uh, that I was pretty passionate about. I never really thought that it would turn into a, an actual career. thought it was just kind of like a hobby that I picked up in the lobby, but it, it ended up being something that I fell in love with and turned into a career I, I later on figured that um like as i'm shooting these friends people would would start to reach out to me on like i think facebook at the time because i was putting these pictures up on facebook and people would ask like hey how much do you charge and i'm like whoa like people will actually pay me to do this this is this is <laughs> crazy so like i was you know charging like i think 50 bucks or something to shoot at the time and 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 slowly the the prices just start to go up and it just turned into a, a whole profession, man. It was it was crazy. Huh. That's uh that 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 sounds like a really kind of interesting journey. What uh you know, how do you remember the moment where it went from I'm gonna shoot some friends for fun to hey, I'm gonna take this seriously enough for this to turn into my career. Do you remember that moment? Is the, what what triggered that? Was it an event? Was it a specific client request where you got noticed enough where, you know, there was enough money in it where you're like, Okay, I can actually do this? Yeah, yeah. I um, so I was I was shooting friends, and uh, there were there were a few things actually. Uh, I had a few a few friends that were getting into the music industry, and so I started shooting their mixtape covers and, and things like that. And then a couple of them had had ended up um, getting record deals, and so uh, they got record deals and. and you know, I was already taking their pictures at the time and it was like, OK, well, you think that you would be, you know, open to shooting this this single cover or this album artwork for, you know, mm. for a check. And I'm like, of course, you know, but I, I would say that I I really started taking it serious when I so my my parents got me a camera for like Christmas after I, you know, expressed an interest in it. And um I was just shooting a bunch of stuff and and it wasn't until I actually I guess um I had a shoot coming up for 
for one of one of my friends, his album cover, which we actually didn't end up using any of these images, but I knew that I wanted this to be like done the right way, you know? So I was like, okay, well, I want to invest in like whatever the best camera is that I can afford at the time would be. And I think that this was like, um, man, I don't remember what it was. I feel like this was when the Canon 5D had just became like a, a thing. It was like the the, maybe it was a Mark II or something. I don't. I don't remember. But it was like this mm. Canon camera that I uh, that I saved up like all of my coins to get, and and I got that. And I'm like, okay, if I'm going to spend this kind of money on on this camera, then it has to be like a, a serious thing. Like I, I have to take mm. it seriously. So I got that camera, and uh, we went out and and we shot those photos, and people people loved what they did see. Like I said, we, we didn't end up shooting or we didn't end up using those photos as the actual album cover, but we shot like a ton of photos that day. And, um, that's when I knew like, okay, this is, this is going to be a, a real thing. And mm -hmm. so that was like those friends, there was a, a gentleman, his name is one is big Sean. Uh, he still makes, you know, amazing music. And there's another gentleman, Mike Posner, and he still makes awesome music as well. So both of them, like I, I, we would run around just like, you know, shooting for fun. But as they started to progress in their careers, um, you know, I was just kind of like capturing the moments and, and mixtape covers and single artwork and, and all of that. And once I got that camera, though, I knew like, mm -hmm. hey, this is this is a serious thing. Like, I'm, you can't just spend this type of money on something and, and not try to like, you know, turn it into an actual career. Yeah. Um, yeah. and you, you moved to LA, right? Like you're not originally from LA. I'm not originally from LA. So I, I, I grew up in Michigan. I moved from Detroit. I moved from Detroit nice. to, to LA about eight years ago. And, um, that was, you know, I guess that's when it went from me calling myself like, uh, an actual photographer to, Oh no, you have to, like, you are a professional photographer. That's when I really started to get, you know, the, I guess, um, the big time, you know, like the big gigs, if, if you'll mm -hmm. call it that. Um, that's when I started shooting campaigns and, and mm -hmm. working with all of these different, these different brands and, and really got into doing more creative direction and just like brand partnership and traveling and, and doing all, all of this stuff. So that was about eight years ago now, but yeah, I'm, I'm from, from Michigan. I moved to LA and, um, I don't know. The first, the first year in LA was rough, man. You know, it was, it was rough. Like I was like, yeah, I'm going to go out there and pursue, you know, pursue this photography thing. And it's just going to like, like, so before I moved in Michigan, because I was shooting for these, uh, these different entertainers, I, I thought I was, you know, like doing decent, like in, in Michigan, but it was, completely different in LA. No one knew me. Um, I'd moved there with barely any money. And I'm like, it's cool. Like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna get out there and I'm gonna show people my work and I'm just gonna start getting work and it's just gonna happen. I don't know what I thought. But <laughs> I thought it was just gonna happen. Yeah. And it didn't happen that way. You know, like my, my first year out there, I was, man, struggling. Like at least the, the first six months, I remember I was like really broke, you know, like really broke. I remember having like, um, I remember the first few months, like, um, man, like I, I just no money. Like I remember calling back home, like calling my parents, like, Hey, do you think that I could like order a pizza on your, on your debit card? Could, could you order me a pizza? <laughs> yeah. Uh, while they're in Michigan, you know, like just, and I'm trying to like make this large pizza stretch. Cause I'm just like, so, you know, so broke, man, I'm, I'm doing these shoots for, you know, little to no pay. And, and even then there was like net 30. So, um, so I'm like, uh, you know, I'm doing shoots for like a couple hundred bucks for these different, for these different companies. And, and by the time I actually get paid, I've already pretty much like spent the couple hundred bucks that I would get for the, for the shoot. It was, it was rough. Um, it wasn't until, so I moved out there like, um, in the summer, it was like June. Actually it was around, you know, around this time. Like I, I moved there around June and it wasn't until, uh, the top of that, that next year that, um, things started to sort of take shape. Um, I, I remember just feeling like, okay, I gotta, I gotta do something, you know, I gotta do something. And so I started to, to reach out to a bunch of people. I started to tighten up my resume and I started to, you know, uh, like 
tighten up my portfolio and reach out to people on LinkedIn and these other like networking sites. And um, at the top of the year, I started to get some of the people that I was reaching out to um, like call me, you know, like just most of it didn't go through, but some of it would. And I remember um, the first big job or first big assignment that I got once I moved to LA was a job for, um, well, two, one, I had an opportunity to shoot a music artist for Atlantic Records. Uh, and so that was like, I guess, my first big check. But then shortly after that, I was asked to go on this tour for uh, uh, TGI Fridays, the, the restaurant. Mm. And it was going to be this summer tour where I was going to travel and, and do this, um, I think it was like a 10 or 12 week tour where each week or each each week I was in a different city and state, just kind of documenting the best of handcrafted America. And while I was, while I was doing that, I met tons of people and, and shot so many images and like, uh, which that's a whole nother story. Cause at the end of the tour, I actually like all of my camera gear ended up getting stolen and the hard drives and all of the, all of the work just got stolen and I'd have nothing to really show for it. But at that time, you know, like it was like, I was posting stuff and, and sort of, you know, sharing that online and um that was one of the things that really really kicked off my journey as a as a creative in in la for sure that's a, that's a so it sounds like you sounds like you know you went through a, a tough time uh and then there's the hustle there right like there's there's a, some kind of a wake-up call did you have a mentor or was that something that you just something clicked and you're like i gotta hustle to make this happen um I didn't have a, a mentor. I just knew that I had to hustle. You know, your back is against the wall and you're like, look, yeah. you got to make money somehow. You know, you got to make money yeah. somehow. And, and I would, I wanted to uh, invest in myself. And I felt like it was important for me to get paid to be myself as opposed to uh, me going and working elsewhere. I didn't have a problem working elsewhere, but I just felt like if I put as, mu as much time and energy and the effort into working for myself as I would for someone else, then uh, it would it would pay off at some point. And so with that hustle, I made it a point to say like, look, I'm going to do whatever I have to do to make sure that people see my work. And so I yeah. would, um, when I mentioned LinkedIn, like I would, I would, uh, I would get on these social networking sites, Facebook, LinkedIn, um, Instagram, and, and just write a list of everyone that I wanted to reach out to. And I would send, I would make it a point to send a hundred emails a week. And, you know, mm -hmm. like I was sending 20 emails a day. I'm like, I'm not going to stop. I'm not getting out of this seat until I send 20 emails a day. I don't care who it is. You know, I'm sending emails to to friends, to family, to, to art directors, to creative directors, to, to, to producers, to art buyers, to, um, founders, co-founders, just anyone that I could possibly find that I felt like should see the work that I'm creating. And hopefully, um, yeah. you know, they'll like it enough to, to tell someone about me or, or some sort of opportunity may come from it, you know, and I just kept doing that and kept doing that. And, um, you know, eventually mm -hmm. some of those people like started to start to call. So those to backtrack a little bit, that's what I was doing before. Like, so that six months when I just, there was nothing coming in. That's what I was doing during that time. And it took a few months, I say three or four months before I actually got a phone call. It was at the beginning of the year where people were like, Hey man, like love your work. Um, don't have anything for you now, but we're going to keep, you know, keep you in mind. And every few months I would just like, Hey, like just circling back, like still shooting. Here yeah, goes yeah. some new stuff. Like uh -huh. just, you know, yeah, had to. Yeah, had the, to, the bit, yeah, you had you had to do that, right? And so, like, yeah. listen, it's it it sounds like uh, so like a format. What we've realized is that there's the artistic journey of a photographer, right? The craft, the development of the work, the skill, and then there's the business journey, right? The the business entrepreneur connection hustle. Just that story alone, it sounds like you have that business hustle. You know, you you're back against the wall. You start writing yeah. emails, you start writing messages, and eventually something sticks, and you you figure it out, and so that you have momentum there. Um, did you, did you have any kind of business experience before that? Cause it's, you know, it's not, you know, yes, everyone can write an email, but like there's a way of writing an email and, and you also have to make sure that you're, you're, you're keeping in touch and connecting with those people and building those relationships. Did you have a business background at all? Or is that just, did that just come naturally for you? Uh, a little bit of both. So I, I never went to college. Um, 
So it wasn't like I, you know, took up business in, in college or had any classes or anything. But I, before I had moved to LA or before I got started, I was comfortable with reaching out to people. Like I was always, uh, I guess, hustling, if you will. Like when I was in high school, I used to sell um, like mixtapes and I would, I, I threw parties and, and doing that sort of thing. But in terms of like business, business, not, not so much. I just knew that uh, the only way to get what you want is to ask for it. And mm -hmm. You can't be afraid, you know, you can't be afraid yeah. to get out there and actually, actually like reach out to people and let them know that you exist and let them know what you want. Because if you, you know, close mouths, don't get fed is what my parents used to always tell me. <laughs> and so if it's something that you want, you just have to like, you know, you just have to let them know. So in a way I did, but it, it, it was more of me just not being afraid and sending out tons of emails and realizing that there's kind of like um, a certain way to do it. Like, for example, um, I would I would send out these emails and these emails were kind of a, a little longer than they should have been. I felt like, oh, well, in order to feel or in order to come off as a professional, like I need to, you know, write these paragraphs and all of this. And then <laughs> I, I, I realized that the longer the emails, the less people want to read them. And so I'm like, yeah. OK, let me kind of figure <laughs> out straight to the point, you know, and um yeah. After sending out, I don't know, hundreds of emails and realizing that the ones that like toward the end of the day were the ones that people will respond to because I was kind of lazy, like just, ah, you know, I'm Dante. Here's my work. Let me know. You know, those were the ones that people would get back to. And I'm like, well, wait a minute, I'm sending these two or three paragraphs to these people and they're not even reading them. And then when I send like these one liners, people are getting back. So I just yeah. kind of started doing yeah. that. And it was it was definitely more like a trial and error thing. Yeah, and and before you're probably just sending them and you're hoping for the best. Now you can use like trackers to figure out how many emails were opened and how long. You know, did they click on something? Like all yeah, these all so, these tactics you can so utilize different. now, right? Like, well, no, I, I know that you read it now because you've <laughs> opened this. You've opened this three times at this time. Yeah. So you know, yeah. like it's, it's so. Don't different. lie to me. <laughs> right, you read right, it exactly, yeah. exactly. So you know, it's it's so much different from from how it used to be. Uh, back then, it was honestly just just a shot in the dark, and and yeah. now. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's so much more strategic and, and they have, um, there are programs out there that, that help you with like a, a database of these different people that you want to reach out to and things like that. So it just makes it much easier. You know, after a while you compile a, a, a mailing list of the people that you've reached out to or people that have reached out to you, like potential clients and stuff. So, you know, over, over the years, I've definitely learned how to not just be a photographer or a creative, but um, a businessman and the importance of yeah. actually running a business or that being more important than, than the work itself you know, yeah. um, at this point, honestly. Well, it sounds like it sounds like you did both really well, right? You you went through this journey where people validated your work. They said, you know, you're good enough. We're gonna pay you now. Like we want you to shoot for us. And then you go out there and you just put yourself out there. You take the risk. You hustle. You take you take the biggest risk of your life, moving somewhere new. You know, your back's against the wall, and then you you make it happen. That's you know that's commendable. Congratulations. That doesn't happen to everybody. It takes the right. You know, it takes a, a you know a, a certain amount of luck. Definitely a lot of hustle, right? Uh, sure. right time, right place, right time, etc. cetera. Uh, sure. so congratulations on, on all that you've achieved. And I know that I've caught you at a really good time now. Cause I think you've just signed with representation, right? Like you've got a, yeah. you've got, you found an agent or an agent found you recently. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, just recently at the top of this year, I, I signed with uh represent i have representation now uh fox creative love them over there Paige long she's a sweetheart um they take care of me i was just on the phone with them right before this uh you know right before this podcast actually just uh getting some stuff together for some shoots that we have coming up within the next few weeks uh but that that helps tremendously you know it helps yeah. tremendously because um I'm, I'm at a place in my career where i want to be able to focus on more of uh, family time and, and that, especially with the pandemic, but more importantly, uh, just focus on passion projects and, yeah. you know, doing personal work. And this having representation allows me to do that because I don't have to sit in front of the computer and, you know, go back and forth with potential clients and send out those hundred emails that I mentioned and, um, you know, try to figure out like, you know, who else is bidding on a job and, uh, you know, 
travel and, and expenses, just all of that stuff. Like I, I finally have a team that I'm comfortable with that, that actually handles that stuff for me, which is just truly, truly a blessing. And it's just an honor to be, you know, on, on that roster and have someone that I'm, I'm confident in and, and that, um, you know, that, that's like a family, you know, a family that I can, yeah. I can trust to, to handle those things for me. It's, it's awesome. It's been awesome. No. Yeah, that's great. Congratulations. Uh, okay. that, Get, that's a really good segue to uh, talking about your work. Uh, your, let's start with your personal projects because I was looking through your website, even the, the work that you shared with me, the, uh, what is it, the photos of Essence, and there's also a YouTube video, I think, where it captures some of that work. Uh, sure. what, is, what does personal work mean to you? Why, why is it important for you to do personal work? Oh, man. Everyone that is listening to this, personal mm-hmm. work is the most important thing when it comes to being a creative it defines you it helps shape you in your career it allows people to know um what you not only what you are capable of but what type of work you are interested in you know and if you like you get to a certain point in your career where um there's there's so much different work out there or that's coming at you so many people are asking you hey like can you shoot this or that or this or that and like if you if if you just say yes to everything then you can kind of lose yourself as a creative and uh it's important to have some sort of identity you know uh, just as yeah. a creative and, and so with the personal work it allows you to show people what what you are good at or what you're interested in shooting mm-hmm. simply put mm-hmm. But um, personal work for me is something that I try to do as often as possible, if not more than than the the you know the work for clients that I do. Uh, sometimes it just doesn't work like that because it gets really busy. But when I do have a little downtime, especially like last year when um, you know there's a whole pandemic going on and people are staying inside, it allows you to sit down and sort of strategically plan out the the personal work and treat that as if it is work for a client. And that allows you to send send work out to these potential clients, letting them know like, hey, yes, I can do that. And yes, I can do that. But this is this is where my, you know, kind of work is going. This is where my passion lies. This is yeah. like this is what what I see or how I feel right now. You know, like this is, right. for example, um, I started to get bored with photography a few years ago and mm-hmm. I was just trying to figure out what what to do to kind of uh reignite that, you know, that like the love and the passion for it and um I think that it was for I, I think that the reason that I was bored was because everything was starting to sort of look the same with Instagram and all of that. I just felt like everything was just like super HD. And I'm like, yeah. I just need to do something different. Like maybe take a step back and sort of practice the art of slow living and, and just kinda like like do everything from you know, from start to finish. And to me that meant uh getting back into film photography. And so I started shooting way more film photography. I started um, composing my shots differently. I started developing film at home. I started printing more and and just doing all of that. And so when you mentioned the shoot with, um, with Essence, that was, that was one of those, those projects that I was like, okay, well, like, I'm I'm going to pay for this out of pocket. I'm going to get some friends together. We're going to shoot like a BTS video like we used to do back in the day. I'm shooting this like the majority of this is going to be on on film. So like I'm going to develop all of this. I'm going to scan this. I'm going to print this. We're going to like actually put this project together. And this is going to be something that that shows people kind of where I am at, like where, you know, what my eye sees right now today. And yeah, it's just sort yeah. of reignited uh, my passion for photography, being able to shoot uh, not just film, but shooting, um, you know, shooting these these personal projects, these passion projects, like like the cool. shoot that we did with Essence. And then, you know, the projects like like the shoot with Essence, it, do you have a team that you always work with or do you always kind of variety use a variety of creatives so like stylists, makeup artists, or is it always a, a close knit team that you've developed? I have a close knit team. A lot of those projects that we um 
a lot of those projects that I work on. So all of the personal projects, I try to work with the same team, you know, same friends, same family, just so we're comfortable mm-hmm. working together on set. Because uh, with me not going to school for this, I always felt like, oh, like I'd be a lot more nervous if I'm working with a bunch of strangers and this person doesn't know how to load my film or this person, you know, like they just, we just don't like mesh well together, you know? And yeah. so uh, I try my best to, to work with the same people, same, uh, same assistant, same, same stylist, same, you know, like for hair and makeup and wardrobe and, and, and that whole thing, you know, it doesn't always work that way because sometimes I'm in a different city, state, country. Uh, but I try my best to, to keep it, you know, in, in the family. So whatever, mm-hmm. whatever that means, just kind of like constantly working with the same people. I feel like whoever I work with on the personal and the passion projects, those are the people that I bring into the fold when I'm working on something for, I don't know, Wells Fargo or Adidas or Nike or something yeah. like that. Like I just try to make sure that, you know, it's the same team all the time. That's important to me. I feel most comfortable when I'm, when I'm working with a team that I'm comfortable with, you know, that, uh, that sounds awesome. To be honest, like I, when I look at your photography, that project speci- specifically is, is is a work of art. Some of those shots, the lighting, the composition, like it's so beautiful. <laughs> I kind of want to print it and put it on my wall. <laughs> Are you, you selling these prints at all? Like, is this going in a book somewhere? I, I have a book that I that I've been working on. So I have a book that I carry around, um, like old school. You know, like I keep a book with you know, like a portfolio book. And so yeah. whenever someone's like, Hey, like you got an Instagram, I'm like, Oh yeah, I got an Instagram, but I actually have this book and I <laughs> show them the book and, and let them, let them flip through that. Yeah. It's not, it's not for sale yet. It has some, you know, some client work in it and then some personal work in it for sure. Uh, so there's, there's a mix. It's not for sale. A lot of people ask like, when is it going to go on sale? And at some point within the next few years, like I do plan on releasing something that's for sale. Uh, again, with representation, that's something that like allowing them to, to focus on, you know, getting new work and, you know, current clients. And it allows me to take a step back and work on finishing the book and, you know, new prints and things like that. So to answer your question, the short answer is no, it's not for sale right now, but at some point there will be a book. At some point, uh, I'm currently, you know, restructuring the website to where I can uh, put some prints up for people to sell. We're just trying to make it to where it's as easy and as seamless as possible for people to go and, you know, click the pictures that they want to get printed and, you know, figure out framing and and all of that stuff, but do it like straight from the website. So that's something that's been important to me. And that's something that we're working on right now. Let me know. Uh, let me know if we can help. I think you're at the right place. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Definitely at the right place. I'm, I'm. I'm pretty sure that you know we'll get that together really, really soon. <laughs> um, that's awesome. Um, and wanted to take a segue to your uh, other work, your client work, but also talk touch on the celebrity work. I know you shoot uh, a few celebrities here and there. Mm-hmm. I saw the likes of you know Jay Z and Beyonce, uh, mm-hmm. Stevie Wonder. I, I did want to talk about the Stevie Wonder shots because mm-hmm. uh, it really caught my eye. Tell me a little bit about that shoot. And the difficulties oh, of, or, or, or just in general, shooting celebrities. Is, is it a different, yeah, yeah, yeah. different, I different mean, type of client, right? It's, it's so different, man. It's so different because one, the Stevie Wonder show was a little different, but just in general with, with celebrities is awesome because they're, you know, they don't always have that much time, you know, like sometimes you get on set and you spend more time setting up this, like, you know, your set than you do, than you actually have with the, with the talent. And that can make it difficult because, Mm. you know, I've been on shoots where I have 15 minutes to get the shot, you know, and like Mm. we're setting up lights and all this stuff for a couple of hours. And then they're like, okay, you know, you have this person for 15 minutes and you're trying to get like literally like three looks off in 15 minutes. So you're like, click, click, click. And I I shoot a lot of film, so I can't even really see what I have. So I'm like, click, click, click. Okay, we just shot a row. And by the time we're low in the next row, it's almost time for them to get out of there, you know? So it's, it's yeah. tough with, with the Stevie wonder shoot. That was really fun because, um, we had a lot of time, um, so much time. Like we had, you know, the, the entire day, uh, we went to his place in like his home and I think it was in a uh, Bel Air, like out in California. And it was a beautiful home. You know, his team is amazing. Uh, we got there early and the synergy, like just, it was, 
it was so beautiful. Like he was playing beautiful music the entire time and we're dancing mm -hmm. and just having a good time and like have, having a good time. We talked about so many things. He's from, you know, from, from Michigan as I am. So, you know, we, we had quite a bit in common when it comes to that. We talked about new music and old music and, and the whole thing. But just when I say we had so much time, it was, time was important because time wasn't important, you know? So this was my mm -hmm. first time. One, working with Stevie Wonder, he's a legend, everyone knows that. But not only that, it's just, this is my, my first time working with um, uh, uh, like anyone that was that's blind, you know? And yeah, so yeah. when you think about like how you direct them and like how they like, you know, how they actually listen, it's just, it's so much different, but more importantly, how, how they, like how they perceive time, you know, it's just, mm. it's just different, you know, like mm. he, he moves at his own pace because time is just kind of different when you are not really looking at it like, oh, like we're we're losing sunlight or, yeah, yeah. you know, it's just anything like that. You know, it's just completely mm. different. And so it was just it was amazing to 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 be in his presence and, and to work with him like that. But just like his outlook on time and, and how how he approaches things was just so different. And it, it was so mm. It was so cool and, and just put so many things in, in perspective for me. And, you know, the like his the jokes that he was telling about about being blind. Like there's a shot that he was um, like on his balcony and I'm like, OK, just kind of like, you know, look out and like look off the balcony. And he's just like cracking jokes about it and stuff. And I'm like, this is, you know, this is awesome, man. Like He was truly, you know, he's truly a legend and just so talented and he he listens and he's just like a, a great person man like and then you know the the artwork that he has at his home it was just it was an amazing experience man seriously that's awesome and so you shoot you you shoot uh you know a few celebrity shots but what do you want to be known for like what is the genre of photography you want to be you know you're currently practicing oh man i i guess um the short answer is just like a lifestyle you know photography i I shoot a lot of portraits and things like that. A lot of like, I do a lot of advertising and commercial work, a lot of editorial, but I just, just lifestyle in general. I love capturing the moment, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm always telling, I'm, I'm always telling the talent that I work with to look away. One, when, when I do shoots, I always try to have a second shooter there because mm. like I'm getting the main shots, but then I'm always like, okay, look at, you know, look at this person's camera. So like, uh, uh, my 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 first AD or my you know second shooter often is a guy named Justin. I'm like, okay, look at Justin's shooter or look at Justin's camera, um, and just kind of pretend like I'm not here. And mm -hmm. so Justin's taking shots, and I like to sort of just be a fly on the wall and capture those moments because oftentimes when you pick up a camera. Mm -hmm people start to get kind of uncomfortable and they're like, okay, let yeah. me sit up and do this thing that you feel like you're supposed to do when, you know, when there's a camera on you. But yeah. when no one is watching, that's typically when people pull out the best dance moves, you know? And yeah. so I'm like, okay, <laughs> those, those are the best shots for me. I always tell people that, you know, when you're looking at the camera, it's a portrait, but when you're looking at away, or when you're looking away from the camera, it's a moment. And I love to capture mm. those moments. You know, so even if it's a portrait, I'm taking pictures, click, click, click. And then I'm like, all right, we got it. And that's when they'll like laugh, put their head down <laughs> and like, they're like, cool. And that's when I'm actually like, that's when I actually fire away. And those are typically the shots like in my portfolio. Those are the shots that people see. Those are the moments that I try to capture. And then all of the other shots, it's just like, eh, and those were just kind of like warm up, you know? I love that. I, lo I love that technique. That that skill that you just shared. That shared. That's that's pretty awesome. For sure. <laughs> I never. I've never heard that one before. But I, I. I think it's quite quite great. And it's exactly it, right? Capturing that that essence, that moment where somebody's themselves versus putting on the front or the show in front of the lens. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's sometimes it's a little uncomfortable to you know when you have a big camera in front of you. So it's just you know yeah. try to be discreet about it and make people feel as comfortable as possible. Nice. Um, we're shooting this episode during COVID. Uh, COVID's uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, is coming to some kind of an end very soon, right? Fingers crossed. Um, fingers crossed, right? Um, how I'm just, you know, I'm curious if you could share with us how did COVID impact your work, your your professional life? Not so much your your personal life, but your professional life. Did it slow down during that time? Did you get to focus more on your personal life uh, and your personal work? Uh, what was that like? Absolutely, absolutely. I um, 
it slowed down everything. I mean, you know, we all know that the the world sort of just like kind of paused for a few months, you know. Um, yeah. But it just in 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 a lot of ways, man. It, it it allowed me to take a step back and to one focus on the things that were were most important, which was, mm-hmm. you know, uh, my health, and then you know friends and family, and and just you know, realize that life is short. And like I said, like lifestyle photography, but capturing the moments that are most important to me, I realized like even with, you know, when we mentioned uh, celebrity work, I love celebrities and, and all of that. But if we strip them away from all of those things, they're just people, right? And yeah. I realized that I was taking way more pictures um, of of like for clients than I was of my actual closest friends and family Mm -hmm. and so during that time it it made me really take a step back and start capturing way way more uh images of you know just friends and family like spending more time with them capturing those moments and i don't necessarily have to tell them to like sit up straight and stuff during uh you know during like when i'm when i pick up a camera because they're used to just having me around so it was it's just crazy to think that you know i have a camera all the time and i'm so busy setting up these shoes for clients that i'm never taking pictures of the people that i actually care the most about or spend the most time with so during COVID, i've, I've definitely done so so much of that um there have been way more Zoom meetings, like different like calls to like Google Hangouts and things like that than than in person. Um, yeah. The way that I, I sort of showcase my work, I think, is different. Like I've, you know, switched up what's in my portfolio a little bit and, and sort of uh, like adjusted or like made some tweaks to like uh, how my website looks and, and things like that mm-hmm. during during COVID just because I felt like there were certain things that are less important and there are certain things that are way more important and a lot of that you know goes back to personal work and things like that mm-hmm. but COVID has definitely sort of uh shifted my perspective on on those things and and I've kind of you know pivoted into trying to figure out how I can make sure that I I uh, spend way more time with the people that I, I care about the most mm-hmm. which is one of the uh, another one of the reasons why I decided to to you know start to um you know, to, to find representation and, and to do that yeah. thing so that, that way they can focus on the business thing and I can just, you know, spend more time with, with my loved ones. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Well, it's good that, you know, there, there were some learning lessons there and, and some positivity, right? And especially, okay. you know, even the fact that you were able to overcome it and, and, you know, get to this point where now hopefully things will pick up again. I talked to a few photographers recently that uh, they found themselves connecting to their clients more during COVID. Uh, did you do any of that by any chance? Have you had a chance to like actually reach out to your clients just to check on them, see how they were doing? There was a lot of that. There was a lot. Yeah. There were some. There were clients. So when like I was still, I was sending out a bunch of emails. Instead of trying to get new work, it was a lot of just you know me checking on people that mm-hmm. that I work with quite a bit. You know, like it went from uh, emails to us playing video games online together, you know? Nice. So a lot of like uh, Call of Duty and things like that with, nice. with clients that I never would think that I would be like, you know, playing video games with. And it's just sure. like, yeah, this is, <laughs> this is this is awesome. So definitely, definitely a lot of that, you know? There were things, again, with just making sure that people are safe, safe and, mm. and staying healthy and you know like the things that matter most you know like yeah, yeah we want to get yeah. new work and create images and all of that but ultimately you know the the country the world was just going through uh just really strange times you know and and mm. it was it was important to just connect with people and, and not only ask like hey how are you doing but ask like hey how are you really doing you know you ask someone yeah. like yeah. hey how are you like oh i'm good thanks for asking and just go on about their day like no how how are you really you know like yeah. how, yeah. how how's your family like how how are you really doing and so we had time to really take a step back and, and just breathe and, and have like you know, meaningful conversations, like actually mm-hmm. move with intent and as opposed to yeah. just like going through the motions of what we think we're supposed to do or say to people. So absolutely. Like I've, I've built much stronger relationships with, with, uh, you know, some of the people that I've, that I've worked with in the past and people that like, you know, potential clients or, or people that, that I've been talking about doing things with that we just never yeah. got an opportunity to, to work to work together on anything and now we're like you know much closer regardless of of you know our business or our working relationship for sure yeah 
Yeah, and that's so important, right? A lot of people forget that that's, you know, on a day-to-day, there's a transaction involved. You're shooting somebody, somebody's yeah. work, and then you, they pay you, and off you go, and that's it. But there's a there's a human interaction there, right? When everything goes to hell, <laughs> you actually have to connect with people and, like, get to know them, try to help any way you can, check on them. And, and through that, you know, you build bonds, and then eventually pays dividends, right? Those people are going to reach out to you again when, when they need you. They're going to remember you, and now you're top of mind because you've built that connection. Absolutely. Uh, there's, you know, there's a lesson there for a lot of people. Um, what advice would you give to young photographers that want to get to where you are today? Uh, oh, um, keep shooting, keep shooting, shooting, shooting. Uh, you don't have to narrow it down to a certain genre or, or, or anything like that, but keep shooting and pay attention to what you are shooting. And what I mean by pay attention to is a uh, sort of, uh, Pick something that you really enjoy shooting and fine tune that and and show people that through your personal work. Let them know like, hey, I like shooting cars and cats and dogs, but I really like shooting um, products or food or whatever it may be, you know, and like make sure that you have a a solid body of work that shows that because when clients, they when they reach out, like so if they say this is um i don't know like let's say adidas for example you know it's sports if you shoot like a lot of family portraits and things like that that's awesome but if you think that like hey i want to work i want to do work like adidas work you know um you have to look at what they put out there it doesn't mean that you have to shoot exactly what they put out there but Mm -hmm. It's typically some sort of like sports something, you know, so yeah. you yeah. want to make sure that you have a portfolio that that sort of shows that you're capable of doing that because mm-hmm. they're going to get a list of photographers that they're interested in working with. Typically, I don't know, three, four five different people that they're going to choose from. Mm-hmm. And they want to make sure that who like whoever's on that list can can actually pull off what they're trying to, you know, what they're trying to portray in in that particular campaign i have a lot of young photographers that are like i think that my work is awesome but i'm never getting calls from whatever client that they want to work with and i'm like well you're shooting this type of stuff and they do this type of stuff you know you want to make sure that you're like you you have something in your portfolio that shows them that you can do that type of stuff and you know do the research on the photographers that they that they work with and and um just make sure that you're, you know, you're constantly shooting stuff, but constantly shooting the type of stuff that you want people to reach out and, and call you for. Like if you, you know, if you shoot, if you want to shoot weddings and you've never shot anything that looks like a wedding, then people are probably <laughs> yeah, not yeah. going to call you with their wedding. You know, exactly. That's good. That's good. That's good advice. That's good advice. Uh, where can people find you, Dante, if they want to get in touch with you online? Oh man, DanteMarshall.com. Uh, it's DanteMarshall.com, Dante Marshall on Instagram, Dante Marshall on Twitter, Dante Marshall on all that. I, th- I would say just start by DanteMarshall.com and it would take you to, to any of the social media platforms or anything like that, that, um, you know, with, with other work. But I, I keep my, my, my website updated pretty often and, you know, there's always something on there. I'm getting ready to put a blog, like my blog up there. So people will get more of not just like my personal work and my commercial work, but more of like my everyday happenings of just like, hey, here goes yeah. me and my mom at the car wash or getting ice cream and <laughs> things like that. So I'm just kind of like, uh, I'm excited to share some of that, but definitely DanteMarshall.com. Awesome. Well, listen, thank you, Dante, for your time today. Really, really enjoyed talking to you. Really enjoyed learning all about what you're doing. Uh, the knowledge that you shared today is going to be very beneficial for a lot of people that are listening to this from the crew here at Format and myself. Wish you all the best. Stay safe, even though hopefully we're at the end. Uh, and uh, I'll be in touch. Thanks again for your time, man. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Keep shooting. Thanks for joining me on the Photographer's Journey. Join me next time at format.com slash podcast for another photographer conversation as we learn more about how other professional photographers build their business. To support this podcast, don't forget to sign up for a free account at format.com. Podcast listeners get 20% off in the first year at Format with a promo code JOURNEY when you upgrade your plan. If you like this podcast, please subscribe and be sure to share it with your network. From all of us at Format, thank you. And remember, we're here to help you succeed. And I look forward to one day 
sitting down with you and learning how you've succeeded in your photography business. Until next time, thanks.